Hello and welcome to the Pitt Resource Connection. I'm Mary Smith, your host, and I'm real excited to introduce you all to Dr. Ted Morris, who is with East Carolina University and is introducing a new project in our community called Operation Reentry. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you this morning? We're doing really well. Tell us all about this. I got real excited when I read about it and how ECU got involved and, and what this project really is about. Sure. Well, ECU has a long and proud history of supporting our military uh, here in North mm -hmm. Carolina. And as you know, the, the military and defense sector is a tremendous piece of the economy here in North Carolina. So we're very passionate not only about uh, supporting our service members and their families, but supporting that piece of our economy. Operation Reentry is, is very simple. It's a partnership between the university and, and others like us in the academic community and leaders and, and service members throughout the military uh, to really try and address a lot of the needs they have around coming home. And that's from all the wars that we've had, and, and it brought. Is it, is it a particular area, or just the, the wars that we've been in recently? Not just not just the recent. I mean, all the way back into the, the Vietnam era and before. Ooh, okay. um, while the nature of the the, uh, the injuries may have changed over time, many mm -hmm. of the the issues and the and the burdens that people bring home and the challenges are universal to anybody who's who served in combat or even served in the military back home during a, uh, you know an intensive time. So. Uh, all those folks are welcome, as well as their family members. This is okay. about active duty folks, it's about veterans, and it's about their families. So it's the whole military community, really? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So why is it important here in North Carolina? Well, again, it is a tremendously large piece of our economy, especially here in eastern North mm -hmm. Carolina. Uh, whether you look at the, uh, the those employed by the Department of Defense in North Carolina or those civilians employed at places like Cherry Point and the Vertical Lift Center, a huge portion of our economic vitality, especially here in the East, relies on, on the DOD mm -hmm. uh, and the various branches of the service. Again, at the end of the day, it's just the right thing to do. Th these are the 1% who have volunteered to protect and serve mm -hmm. the remaining 99% of us. Exactly. And uh, you know, I mentioned ECU's history. We are a, a Freedom Award winning institution, one of only two universities recognized by the Department of Defense for uh -huh. our support of Guard and Reservist personnel uh, that work at the university. You've got folks across campus that are uh, conducting research and outreach and service to support the military community, and uh, we're very proud of that and seeking to extend that. And I don't think people really understand that that's really going on, because mm -hmm. I know we got involved with one project um, in terms of helping military families while their people were deployed. And it was a very interesting to see that there is such an involvement by ECU in the military life that it's rewarding too, I'm sure. Yes, ma'am. Well, service is our motto. And again, whether that's through education, through research, through outreach or service, mm -hmm. uh, that commitment's there and you can see it campus-wide. So what kind of research is really being conducted right now? A lot of the research focuses on three critical areas, both the resiliency of service members and their families to deal with the challenges they mm -hmm. face, uh, helping them in various aspects of rehabilitation if they've been wounded, uh, but potentially they have a substance abuse problem or a mental health challenge, uh, and then reintegration. How do we bring them most efficiently back into the community, uh, whether that's supporting them in their educational needs, their health care and wellness needs, uh, and certainly in their employment needs. Well, that's really important because there's a lot of adjusting that has to take place depending on what they experience. Like you said, whether they lost limbs, you know, it, it, it's a different life when you've come back from a war. And, and a lot of people don't really like to talk about it sometimes either. So it's, right. it internalizes and, and makes special problems uh, for, the, for the families because they want to be there for them and it makes it more difficult. But it's good that we have something starting now to help not only the, the military person but also the family around and that, that's really their critical support, don't you think? Yes, ma'am. There's been an incredible, I think, beneficial recognition uh, in terms of the, the number of folks who are beginning to address the issues of the family is that mm -hmm. support structure behind, behind our warriors. Um, you know, a lot of the, the, the burdens of the increased deployment cycles, both in frequency and length, have fallen to the families, those folks trying to, mm -hmm. to maintain things on the home front. So I'm glad to see that emphasis. Mm -hmm. And a strong family is the, the greatest safety net to bring home folks from overseas and help them reintegrate. That's exactly right. So the community-based programs that you're 
you're mm -hmm. getting ready to start, I think. Is that right? What, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, Operation Reentry at its core is what we would call a research support organization. So mm -hmm. we support a large number of research projects at our university and universities throughout the country uh, and throughout North Carolina. We have some very specialized facilities that support that research, but we also have specialized facilities that help us apply what we learn through that research to our service members, our veterans, and their families. One example would be uh, helping train returning veterans on dealing with their symptoms of post-traumatic stress syndrome, mm -hmm. how, to, how to deal with those changes in their nervous system that characterize that disorder. Another would be looking at how can we improve the effectiveness of the care our service members and veterans get by including their family members throughout the care process. Another might be looking at the caregivers themselves. We're, we're at the front end of looking at um, how do we more uh, effectively support guard and reserve nursing personnel once they come back and go back into our local hospitals. They've been through mm -hmm. many of the same circumstances mm -hmm. as, as those in combat uh, and yet are now going back into their traditional civilian caregiver role trying to deal with those issues. So it's a, it's a very broad spectrum, um, whether it's dealing with physical disabilities, family therapy issues, mental health issues, and so forth. So the research is, is being conducted with the operation reentry. That's, that's correct. Okay, and then when, when you've conducted that research, that's gonna go to the community partners to be able to better serve the veterans and their families. Absolutely, okay. if we don't apply what we learn, we mm -hmm. haven't done much that's right. to benefit that's anybody. Right. Um, a large portion of operation reentry is focused on disseminating what we learn, so we mm -hmm. will be having a, a national annual conference this uh, fall here at ECU wow. uh, for our, our various university uh, nonprofit community and Department of Defense partners to disseminate a, a lot of that knowledge. But as you said, if we, if we don't translate that research from the laboratory to service to the community, mm -hmm. then we really have missed the mark. And uh, there's a tremendous amount of activity within our colleges, whether they be on the health sciences side of the university or other areas, to reach out and support families, uh, provide telemedicine capacity so mm -hmm. that folks don't have to come all the way to Greenville to maybe get the care they need uh, and to make access to various supporting resources much more easy. And that telemedicine is kind of neat. I've cool. seen, <laughs> seen that underway and in other places, and I think it's really a good thing to have. Um, it's a little different to get used to that the doctor's hanging on the wall somewhere, but you know, that's very interesting that you can do that. Mm -hmm. And this is connected to the White House in some capacity, isn't it? Yes, the White House's Joining Forces campaign really calls for communities to recognize the scope and complexity of the challenge and band together in helping reintegrate veterans and their families. Uh, so we are responding to that, working with the city, working with the mayor and many other partners here in the community on building what we would refer to as a community-based model uh, mm -hmm. to support veteran and family wellness and reintegration. Fantastic. And does that involve the, the, um, like the veterans themselves or is it really just the service providers at this time? Well, first we need to get all the service providers aligned and mm -hmm. integrated. Much of that work through organizations like yours and other partners in the mm -hmm. community has already been done. Our goal is very simple. Let's make sure there's no wrong front door exactly. to our community and the resources that can help support that reintegration. Again, back into schools, into the health care they need, into employment. Um, we are launching a new program right now with Pitt Community College focused on employability. So this summer we'll be piloting a program to provide a, a bundled set of national workforce certifications to veterans. They'll come in in a very short period of time, gain those certifications, and be directly introduced to local employers in advanced manufacturing, pharmaceutical, other other mm -hmm. local industry partners. Well, we'll have to have you back when you well, get that thank going. You. We're and, looking and, forward to and it. And talk more about that in more detail so people can learn how to get involved with that. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a website or is that under construction still? Well, the website is under construction. The website listed here on the page today is, uh, is a test server, but folks can go there and there is information available and we'll be finishing the final construction of that soon and, and it will be available. Okay, so but it's up today and they can see it at the website listed. If somebody wanted to call you, is, mm -hmm. that, is that a possibility Absolutely. to talk, see how they could get involved or something? Our, our phone number is listed. We're at 252-737-1341 and whether you're a community partner, a veteran, a family member, anything uh, we can do to, uh, to better understand your needs and help connect you, we'd like to hear from you. Great. Well, I want to thank you for coming and talking about this because I think it's something we're going to hear a lot about in the next few months and in the fall you're having a big national conference here in Greenville and so uh, that should draw a lot of attention and with all the bases we have in eastern North Carolina 
I think it'll serve a great need that we have here because we have lots of veterans and we love our veterans. Well, thank you. We mm -hmm. honestly believe this is a once in a generation opportunity to recruit this human capital, this talent, mm -hmm. to stay in North Carolina as they leave service. Uh, so selfishly from a community and economic yeah. development perspective, we'd love to have them here. <laughs> Again, it's the right thing to do and we look forward to working with you to okay. accomplish that. Thanks. Thank I you. appreciate you coming in. Yes, ma'am. All right. And we want to thank you all for watching the Pitt Resource Connection. Thank you.